Hey everyone, welcome back to one of my many adventures around Taiwan. I hope you enjoy my candid travel. Stretching the evening. Stretching, what's that? I wanna. <laughs> and perhaps learn a thing or two from them. I am living in Shenzhou, and to get to Jilong in northern Taiwan, I have to begin my travels using the HSR. The high speed rail, which is the HSR, is a very affordable and convenient way to travel around Taiwan. From Shenzhou, I went to Banqiao and then transferred to the Fuxing shuttle which operates as a semi-express and local train in Taipei. All right, currently I'm here in Banqiao and I'm gonna be making my way up way to here. While wishing for something better I try to fix things that weren't broken Misunderstand Welcome back to my channel. Today I've come to Keelung or Keelung, which is in northern Taipei. I guess it's about 30 kilometers from Taipei. Usually people like to come here for a day trip. I feel like this city will probably be a little bit more of a quiet northern city compared to other areas like Jiufan and everything like that. But I'm meeting up with a couple YouTuber friends, so let's go. I want to take this time to give a shout out to Rodolph and his partner Amandine for inviting me along on this trip. Rodolph is utilizing his background in film and making really amazing informative videos about Taiwan. The hard work put into their videos and adventures really shows and I think that's something you guys might be interested in. Definitely consider checking out those videos over on I'm Rodolph. I'll also link it down below in the description box. You can find it there. Okay, back to our adventure in Jilong. Okay. I want to show you guys this city is famous for its Hollywood sign. Let me show you. Do you see it? There it is. All right, we've come to the spot that I have been looking forward to. It is called Jumping Yuguan. So it's Jumping Fishing Port. And it kind of reminds me back home in Canada because a lot of little cities in my area of Canada and in Maritimes have something called jelly bean houses, which we paint our houses all different colors so that sailors and fishermen, everything like that can find the shore very easily through the fog. This city is a port city. Actually, I read online that this is one of the first cities that made contact with the West in the 17th century. Fun little fact, thank you Google. Kind of reminds me of Canada and I really like that. Many people come down here to take Instagram pictures. Yeah. Do you guys see the fish? See them? They almost look tropical. Our journeys that day then brought us to Urshawan Fortress that once guarded Jilong Harbor. Further research online says that the fortress was built in 1841 during the First Opium War to prevent a possible British landing and then modernized in 1884 to prepare for a French landing. During the French invasion, it served as a command post for Chinese general Liu Mingquan. It was also destroyed in 1884 by the bombardment of three French warships. It was rebuilt but not further modernized after the Japanese takeover. Interesting, so this cannon must have shot out into the harbor because that's the harbor there. 
So this city actually reminds me of my hometown as well, again, because of the very deep harbor. So I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, and we have one of the deepest harbors in the world, I believe. They used to say you can fit the whole British Navy within our harbor in Canada, and this deep harbor definitely like just brings me nostalgic feelings back to my hometown. And we also have lots of cannons like this that shoot right out into the harbor. So the multiple cannons that you can see around the fortress, obviously, defend the harbor here and the sign down there says that there's three main points that help defend the Geelong Harbor. It really just looks like my hometown. <laughs> when I look out I'm just like oh my god am I in Canada? I love that. A little piece of Canada is with me you know. So my theory, I'm not sure if I'm right, but is this set lower than the hill so that when ships defend and try to shoot up where the cannons are none of the cannons or gunshots or anything can hit the fortress you know what i mean because it's lower does that make sense it also goes down like deeper these stairs are beautiful i'm just chilling on the stairs enjoying enjoying the nature relaxing cooling down a little bit it's quite hot today do you say it was close to 30 degrees yeah, 28, I think. 28, 30. And I think we're gonna go to another place after this for sunset. These stairs are kind of slippery. Slowly. <sighs> the Grand Terrace is the main passageway between the military camp and two forts to the north and east. With a total of 69 steps, the terrace is about 19 meters long and 8 meters wide. And the slope gradient is about 35 degrees. I absolutely love how everything is so overgrown here and nature is just kind of retaking back what was originally there. There are so many butterflies here. I learned from my friend Leela that Taiwan is the butterfly capital of the world. We were just there. Beautiful. Okay, so we've made it. I think I might not be saying the name right, so I'll always put the font. Zongjian Park. And it's absolutely beautiful here. There's a little bit of construction in the front, but you just gotta walk around it. Zongjian Park is situated on the side of Da Shawan Mountain, which is in the east of Jilong City. There is a white statue of Goddess of Mercy in the park. This 25 meter high statue has become one of the characteristics of Jilong, and it is the biggest goddess statue in Southeast Asia. All right, we made it to the top for a sunset. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a little hazy, but I think that has to do with the season as well. Can you guys spot the Jilong sign? All right, now we're gonna walk back to the hotel. It's about, I don't know, 20, 25 minute walk? 23 minutes. 23 to be exact. Thank you. And we're gonna walk to the city. And the sun, it's more beautiful up here. Uh, while the sun was going down, I feel like the lights just kind of power through. We made it! Whew. Oh, okay. Well, yes! Okay, now that we dropped everything off, we're heading to one of the famous night markets here. Okay, so down this way is a lot of the restaurants that we can sit down and eat at. We're gonna scope out some of the restaurants. Oh, nice! They actually have everything written in both Chinese and English. Oh, and Japanese too. Ramen. Here is crab soup. There's whole pieces of crab in here, yummy. So because this city is a port city, obviously seafood is quite famous here. So down the area we were just at is a lot of seafood stalls, and the other area has food that you would normally find at a night market. Maybe I should try this ice cream. You said it's a famous chain in the north? Yeah, yeah. It's more than Jinchan ice cream. Egg milk, black sesame, taro, passion fruit, cac cactus, interesting, peanut, lemon, Raisin, mango, durian. durian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I got peanut, taro, and black sesame. Nice. I'm gonna try it. The peanut tastes like um, peanut cream in Japan. You know, like not so salty, more sweet. Like sweet potato, but almost nutty. Okay, black sesame. 
doesn't really taste like black sesame. This is super delicious. I feel like the milk is creamier and they don't put too much brown sugar in it so it doesn't overpower the milk. Five stars. Oh my goodness. What a fun and exciting day. I feel like I did so much. And it was nice because I was with people this time. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Hi everyone, good morning. It's like 7.30 a.m. Everyone is still sleeping, so I'm just gonna go and get coffee. I'm kind of an early riser, so I don't wanna disturb anyone, but wow, the morning is already like bustling over here. There's lots of people out doing their shopping in the morning. heading to a, I guess, a historical house, an old mansion. I wish I caught that on camera. Someone was like, hello, how are you? Nice to meet you, from their balcony up there. Cute. Huh. Yeah, the view from up here is definitely pretty. You can kind of see the Keelong sign, Geelong, Geelong. Sign. Oh my god. Somebody's gonna correct me in this video and I'm gonna say thank you very much. So these ferns actually have meaning. It says here, a symbol of Geelong is the ferns that grow all over the mountains, but few men would ever take notice. must have been really beautiful back in the day. I wonder if I can find a picture of it online, like what it used to look like. If I can, I'll insert it. Rudolph's doing his thing. Hi, Bubby. I love black cats. There's more up there. All right, we're heading into the Denai Market. We were here yesterday to eat the dumplings, but we're gonna try another place today. rated five stars. These guys have been here before and they told me it's really good. I think this place is called Jia Yuan and then Sushi. So when I cannot read a menu, I just use Google Translate like this. And for the most part, I mean, it does its job. I played it safe and I ended up getting shrimp, asparagus, temaki, the hand roll. <laughs> How is the food? Delicious? Yeah. Delicious, there's definitely mayonnaise on here. Kind of smoky. Mm. I wish I liked fish because it looks amazing. So this bowl here runs for about 380 NTD. And I think this one is 180. One of them? Yeah. I love this, when locals just want to show you things around their house that they think is beautiful. Wow! <laughs> this flower is that flower on the house. How does it smell? It's incredible, it smells like, like pure, but like the pure one is like super, super ripe. Mm. Super sweet. It's so sweet. I don't know where she came from Kinda turn me upside down I just don't know what to do. We made it! We made it to the famous sign! Bring her one of my t shirts so it smells like her perfume. We just took an Uber and all these lovely people here were telling me about how amazing this 
places. So I have it out here on Google. It's called Shandong Yan. Apparently it can also be called a fairy cave or the deity's cave and it's a natural sea cave. Basically a temple in the mountain. It says the cave was a shrine and resting place for fishermen during the Qing Dynasty and it was converted to a Buddhist temple since the Japanese occupation period. Thank you Wikipedia. Even the pattern on the ground is nice. Something about the way she laughs And the way she always dances When she thinks nobody sees And when she's gonna miss her soul I tell her, baby, please don't go I think you should stay with me And I, I really There's a whole little mini cave here Look! Oh, quite tight! I'm wearing all white The boys are here somewhere. Oh my god, I literally have to duck. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah! It leads to this. All right. Oh, don't. Don't play me like that. Oh my god, don't play me like that. You're gonna jinx it. <laughs> The smell of incense is strong because it's used a little smoky, but also it's like the smell just kind of reminds me of Taiwan. Yeah. We're making our way up to the park. <laughs> we are. This is the harbor here. As I said, it's a port city. Oh, in 2003, it's become a free trade zone. And now we're going to end the day at Cafe Enzo. I look in the mirror, who's looking back at me? I don't know what happened. Oh my god, this is our stuff. Oh my goodness. But we got tired. There's nothing left to do but to say. Thanks for inviting me, guys. I had a really good time. You only wish that I knew how to go on. Baby, you and me were so messed up together. Even if we try, we'd be stuck here forever. All right, so I've come to that part of the video where I sit down and talk about the budget and go over everything that I spent in Jilong. So I like to include this in my travel videos at the end because I feel like it really helps people planning travel to make a budget as well as expectations can be managed or met this way. I actually think that I didn't really spend so much on this trip and it was a very, very affordable getaway for two days. So I ended up taking the HSR, the high speed rail and the express trains and regular trains to Geelong as well as back again as well as I paid for the uber for all of us to go around the city we used uber a few times so the transportation cost that I end up spending for the trains and all the ubers for me came to one sec I have it written down 1568 Taiwan dollars so NT which is about 6,000 yen 54 American dollars or about 70 dollars Canadian you can have a much cheaper budget by just not taking ubers and taking the bus so the transportation and all of the food that was eaten in the video cost me 2,998 NTD I know some people don't understand Taiwan dollars so I like to include the conversion rates in my videos around here so I'm going to include them for places like Japan Brazil Australia, Canada, Mexico, India, Philippines. Basically, I'd like to know if you guys think this trip was expensive, affordable, or cheap. You can sound off down below in the comment section. I'm always there reading. So yeah, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, be sure to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, support me on Instagram, <laughs> subscribe down below for my next adventure here in Taiwan, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh my god, there's karaoke trucks in Taiwan. Uh...